Hello, this is Josh from the AJ Mirwalk bringing you another episode of Science and Sailing. Today, we'll be continuing our oyster mini-series with an oyster dissection. Let's start by looking at a complete intact oyster. By looking at this, would you say that it is alive or dead? Believe it or not, this is a living oyster. Oysters can live for several weeks with being out of the water as long as they are kept cool. They can clamp their shells together so tightly that water cannot escape. So this oyster shell is actually full of water, preventing it from drying out. Oysters are actually very strong, and it's nearly impossible to pull the shells apart with your bare hands. So when people open them, they actually have to use a tool called a shucking knife in order to open the oyster. But before we do that, let's take a, look, a closer look at this guy. Now, can you see how one of these uh, sides of the oysters is more dome-shaped, while the other side seems a little more flat? Well, the flatter side is the shell that was on the bottom of the oyster when it was attached. You might also see that there is a small shell attached to the back of this oyster. That small shell is a baby oyster. When they're little, they can be called spats, and it's growing on the back of this adult oyster. Now let's get to the inside. Now, now that this oyster has been opened, we can see all the structures that are located inside. The first thing that I want to show you is the oyster's heart. It's located right next to the adductor muscle. And as you can see, it's still beating. Oysters can stay alive for minutes after they've been opened. Right next to its heart is the strong muscle that was holding the shells together. This is called the adductor muscle. Most of the oyster it's really squishy, but this muscle is a little bit more firm than the rest of the, the body. This is how the oyster can keep its shell closed so firmly and water can escape when it's out. Now let's look at the oyster's respiratory and digestive system. When an oyster breathes, it opens its shell up just a tiny bit to let some water in. Then it uses these little hair-like appendages which are called cilia, to push water through the oyster and along its gills. The gills are in here. You can see that there are four of them, and they look kind of like the pages of a book. These gills serve two purposes. They allow the oyster to breathe by exchanging oxygen between the water and the oyster's bloodstream, and they produce mucus that transports the oyster's food to its mouth. Once the food is coated with mucus, it moves up along the gills to the oyster's mouth, which you can see here. From the oyster's mouth, the food moves to its stomach, which is right here. You can see that there's still some food in here. He's a little plump. After the food goes through the oyster's digest digestive tract, it comes out of the oyster's anus, which is right here. The last thing I want to show you is the oyster's mantle. The mantle is this outer layer of tissue here. This organ creates new shell material and allows the oyster to grow. It's also responsible for the formation of pearls in some oysters. If something gets stuck inside the oyster's shell, like a parasite or a piece of sand, the oyster's mantle will begin coating the irritant with nacre, which is the same material as the inside of the oyster's shell. Over a period of months or years, the nacre will become thick and form a pearl. Different types of oysters form different types of pearls. Unfortunately, our Delaware Bay oysters do not make particularly attractive pearls. So, what parts of the body do you think an oyster might have? 
When you eat an oyster, are you eating the entire thing or just little bits of it? Um, how is an oyster's anatomy different than your own? What other parts of the body do they have that you don't have or what do you have that they have? Let us know in the comment section below. This has been Josh with the AJ Mirwald bringing the Bay Shore to you.